kind of surreal and unpredictable. Literally just got back from Adelaide and went straight into lockdown, so it was very strange making this really sudden adjustment. 2020 was going to be a very busy season for everyone at Scottish Opera. For me, it all came at once, and I think in about three days, I lost six months of work. It just evaporated. Came back to, to London and, yeah, just tried to put the pieces together. We're asking people to fall in love without being able to touch each other or be tactile or be intimate in any way. What happens if we're exploring grief without having any ability to touch each other or hold each other? Because that's exactly what we've been experiencing, just in a very, very different world. And that's why Berlin is the perfect piece, Stuart. <laughs> you really, really picked, picked the perfect piece. There was a couple of things which were an absolute saviour actually, which was the sewing machine and a Nintendo Switch. So actually it wasn't so much practice, but actually, yeah, I sort of, they were certainly helped fill my time. Made a huge to-do list. <laughs> I still have quite a big to-do list. Then Marion in our props department spearheaded and fundraised to get a bunch of film and theatre technicians um, together to make visors for the NHS. For about two months solidly we worked uh, producing about 9,000 visors and distributing them out into the community, which was something that I can't ever have ever seen us doing, but is now something I'm incredibly proud of and extremely proud of the way that this, these technicians and the Scottish Opera technicians in particular all came together. Well, it took maybe three and a half weeks and, uh, and I got a job at St Thomas's Hospital uh, right in the centre of London and I was working in the NHS supply chain so I was stocking uh, of various wards with the medical equipment that they needed and, uh, and particularly at that time PPE was, was very, very important so I was doing like personal deliveries to the ICUs to make sure that they had enough gowns and, and masks and face shields and yeah, it was quite full on, especially April, May. It was really, yeah, interesting time. My own father had a stroke during lockdown, um, which I wouldn't wish on anybody, you know, to have to see their, their parent go into hospital when there's a, a huge COVID scare going on. There was a few moments, like I think everybody has had through this, where I just thought, gosh, this is a real hitting your head against the wall. How do you get through this? And I think you just have to reach out personally. You just reach out to people. Um, and I was lucky that I had a lot of good people around me, you know. It maybe came a few months later, the morning of the loss of, of my livelihood and, and of art and just missing the sounds of opera and an orchestra and live voices and and big music. And that's why it's so terrific. Like, that's, people are going out on a limb to make something in this environment that, that has all of those things. It's, it's been really terrific, our first day of rehearsals, working at this glorious music. Certainly being back today for the first time properly with a lot of my colleagues and playing something like Bohème as well, being like sort of one of the first main things that we're playing is really great. There's been an excitement to sort of do stuff, if we can be kind of one of the first and do it really well, do it safely. You know, loads of us could have been doing something else, but we work in this industry because it's quite special. It's this eclectic, crazy bunch of people uh, working to a common goal. So it, it is really nice to kind of think, yeah, we're going to come back and maybe appreciate ourselves even more what we do. 